Hi hey folks, hey my folks. name is Gary Spally, the host for Back to Basics and other Back to Basics for another week. Today's going to be a tough topic, isn't it? We're going to be talking about death. We're going to be talking about actually pretty much death. But the thing is, how do you prepare for for a really event when it comes to a family, when it comes to just a loved one, right? Right. They really don't know what to do. They don't know what needs to happen. And that's what we struggle. Struggle. So this lady, so this lady I, spoke I spoke with her, with her many, many, many times on a certain on a platform, certain platform. Uh, Clubhouse, Clubhouse 205. 205. So, so she, she has, has been, been a great friend of mine, mine, and we chit chatted uh, uh, maybe way, way, back way back in a couple, couple months, months back. back. And, we, and decided we decided that I think, that I think this, this topic, topic really needs to be talked out. out. Because, because it seems, it seems like, like it's a taboo topic, but necessary topic. So let's bring Andrea to the call and let's talk about the basics of planning out death, death and, and what, what needs, needs to happen, to happen when, when it, it does, does happen. happen. Here, Here we go. go. How are you, Andrea? Thanks, Thanks for coming, for coming to Back to Basics. Basics. No worries. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Thank you for uh, coming to Back, to Back to Basics. But before we get into the details of who you are, what you are, and what this whole episode is all about, and what are you all about, what does Back to Basics mean to you? I think it's more so just educating the community. So, which is really good because he has some interesting topics, including the one we'll be talking about today. So, it's just at the end of the day, just being able to tune in, learn more, learn different topics, and just getting back to the basics of life in general, right? Life. Yeah. Life. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. true. That is true. And I, 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 I don't know if we take it for granted or we just don't know how to handle it when it does come in our way. What are your thoughts on that? I think, I think it's, it's all, all the above. Mm. We don't we talk about it. And because we yeah. don't talk about it, we don't know how to handle it. And if we don't mm. talk about it, we won't know how to handle it, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Andrea, thank you again for coming on uh, Back to Basics. And uh, definitely my honor, uh, for, for sure. sure. You know, when I asked you a question on, on the calendar, and I said, what do you think the title should be? And you honestly gave me three choices, right? Because I think you were confused as to how people will react, I think. Right. right. So, so let me let me give you the three titles, titles that you mentioned. mentioned. Your, Your legacy is who you want to become. become. How do you want to be remembered? remembered? And, and the third one is six steps to prepare for your final departure, departure which, which is death. death. Yeah. Now, now, why, why is it so difficult to come up with the title of the episode? What are your thoughts on that? Do you know what? Sometimes it depends on the crowd. Like, like if it's, if a, it's crowd a crowd that, that um, if your listeners, listeners are, are more people who have these interesting conversations and they're interested, mm -hmm. but at the, at the same, same time, when it comes, comes to this topic, topic as soon as you say, say, say this word, people want to run, run, right? right? So, so how can you say this in a way that people, people want to hear more, more mm -hmm. and that not get interested and there's not a fear, right? Right. And because it's a tab topic, it tends to kind of tread like light. So mm -hmm. this, this is why, why um, I set the three, three so, that so that you can, can decide, decide on, on. Okay, okay, this is will work well. well. So, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you again, again uh, for, for, for making me in trouble for coming up with the title of like that. Thank you for that. You know, um, let, let, let me ask you this, right? right? How, How difficult is it to to, to prepare when when unforeseen happens in the family or even your loved ones or your friends? I mean, recently I, mean, recently I, I went through, through like, that, like that with one of my friend's uh, mother, right? And, right? and he, he asked, asked me, what do I need to do? And honestly, I mean, I, I, mean, I knew what to do because my dad passed away in 2009. But, 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 but he will, he will not, not meet people, people like me. Like there will be others and they'll, and they'll be like, I don't know what to do. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the thought, and this is why it's so important that we have this conversation. Because the reality is, 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 is that when, when there was a passing, passing out of family, family, there's, there's so, so much so much confusion. confusion. There's so there's much so much chaos. chaos. No one knows, no one what, knows to what to do. Do you know what I mean? And it's not. And this is why we have this step 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 guide, and we use it as a guide to help your loved ones. And even when you look at the book that I wrote, it's a resource for us to read it, whether we have family, whether we are an adult. Child, child, with aging parents. Let's be real. When it comes to aging parents, they don't want to talk about it. But if something right. happens, happens, it's going to fall, fall on us. So it's better to better yourself, right? Right. And at the and end, end of the day, day it's just for us, for us to, to 
you know, you find know, find a priority, a priority to under, to under it, because let's, 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 let's be real. Let's be real. Death, death is going to happen to one out of one, one, out of one, 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 one,
Well, there's two things. And, you know, such a good question because there's two things. One, I say more like, just hope that you don't have to deal with it because your loved one didn't do it because it's going to fall on you. And seriously, it's one of those things that you almost have to experience it first to understand how important it is, right? So that's the first one. And the second one is that you want to ensure that your assets and stuff are going to the people that you wanted to. Say that there is an estranged husband, that you haven't been with him for however long, but he's your husband. It can fall on him. Or if you have siblings that you've never spoken to, like, you know, it could end up being those who you don't want to have what you have, and they're the ones who um, who's going to get it. And of course, it's going to end up being a, um, a battle, um, you know, and it's not just the will, it's going to be the living will as well. So that is if we lose mental capacity, we're going to delegate someone to make those um, financial decisions on our behalf. And I just want to put it out there. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just being so basic. And for those who want more information, definitely contact um, a will and estates lawyer in your area just because they they do a package. But with the living will, um, there's two. There's one who we are delegate getting someone to make those um, financial decisions on our behalf. And then there's the, um, the other person who's going to make those like decisions when it comes to where we're going to live or our health choices and decisions that um, need to be made. Now, say, for instance, we have three children and we have one child that we would never, ever want to even touch one cent of our money. Now, because we didn't set this up in advance and it's and if we lose mental capacity and now one, our family will spend a whole lot more money when this is not done in advance. And two, it could be those three children who were going to the courthouse to now want to get that to be that person that is responsible. And the judge might grant it to that child that you don't want it to be. So you want those decisions to be your decisions. It's your life. You've built up your legacy all these years. Why towards the end do you want to leave it to somebody else, right? So, you know, and it's the same thing. Like if we have children, like we hear so many, so many stories. I'll say that there's a couple who are split and, and the children lives with the, say the father and something happens to the father well, the mother is going to get the first choice. Now, if the father has raised the kids, they've been with the family, and they're so used to that. The fa- um, the mother comes now, takes them away, and they will have no friendship or no relationship with that other side of the family. So it's things like these that we need to put in our wills. Just to, so it's our voice when we when we are no longer around. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you again for explaining that. And I think we're, when we had that pre call before the show. Uh, you know, we talked at least for an hour, didn't we? And, uh, it, it seems like it's a very necessary talk uh, to happen. So thank you again for coming here again, uh, you know, and uh, and going through this here. So let me let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. What made you get into this field? What what really triggered you? Obviously, you care for people. But what really triggered you? Of course, it was I feel like it was. So just a little bit. So my background is in HR. Okay. So I did staffing recruitment. So I would have, if someone told me like years in advance before I started this, because now we're going on six, seven years, I would be doing this. I wouldn't have believed them because this is not me. Right. (laughs) But at the same time, once I got in it and I realized that this, there's a missing piece, a lot of people don't understand this importance and what triggered it the most was when I was working with a company prior and I was visiting um, union members and I went to one union member's home to explain to him um, his options for permanent benefits. And one was a funeral coverage. And he told me straight that he doesn't need it because he's not going to die. And he was so serious, right? So that was the first thing. And the second one was when I went to this young couple's home, because I'd always ask the question, do you have a will? Do you um, have a will? And most people said no. And back then I didn't either. So it's just a norm, right? And I um, met this young couple. And when I asked a question, they said yes. And I was like, what do you mean you have a will? (laughs) And they told me that the reason why they have a will, because when their close family, um, when a close family friend passed away from domestic violence, the children came to the funeral um, with social services. And that's when they realized that they needed to do this. So those two, I thought to myself, wow, 
need to be doing something different. And that's when I realized that I need to do some changes. And instead of me visiting one house, one house, one house, how can I do it? So I'm more speaking to bigger groups. And this is pretty much how this came about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. And uh, let me ask you this. Does it really, I'm sure it does, but does it really give you satisfaction? I'm going to tell you why it does give me satisfaction because most people that I know, they don't know much of anything. And it's almost like when I did my um, my second license here, I was learning so much that I never knew. And I thought to myself, do people really know this stuff? So I felt like I need to be that voice. How do I just get it out there? So that's the, um, the satisfaction because the goal is that if I tell you something, you're going to tell somebody. And the more that we can get this out, more families will have a better death um, experience. It's night and day when there's a conversation and there's a plan in place, as opposed to there's no conversation and there's nothing um, in place. And it even affects our grief journey. We're all going to grieve when we lose a loved one. But it's one thing when someone has done the work in advance and left a guide for those loved ones, as opposed to nothing is done and it's a mess and you're trying to figure out something during a devastating time it's not it's not easy it's either way it's not easy but it makes it even worse when now you have to make all these decisions you don't even know what your loved one wanted you are now making decisions that you might regret later on and they're permanent decisions let's say for instance that one wants to really be cremated and you do burial or vice versa. And then, then you find out after, you know, that's on your conscience, right? So it's just better to have these conversations years in advance and you don't have to think about it. And it adds to our legacy at the end as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again for that. So we, we have started a, a new segment on Back to Basics. And let me let me ask you this question, okay? Besides your book, uh, what what book resonates with you when it comes to reading? I want to give a chance to other people to read good books and recommended by the guests uh, and my celebrities on my show. So what are your thoughts on that? I know it's going to be kind of similar to what I do. And I know you're probably just like, really, Andrea, this is what you're going to tell me. <laughs> you know, I read this book called um, We Can Do This. And it's actually uh, an adult child who had to experience having to take care of parents during their um, senior years and pretty much wrote a book to give people a guide as to what to do in advance with um, aging parents and what to put in plans in advance so it'll be less stress on, you know, we're in that sandwich generation where we have aging parents and we have young children. And if there is a crisis, then you're trying to juggle it all, right? So the more that you could do in advance, it's going to help. So I would have to say that book. Thank you. Thank you again. And I think I'll, I'm going to go and gra grab that book myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see that if that helps me in any way, right. uh, then I guess I'll take it offline and, uh, and do some exchange notes between both of us to see, you know, if you got right or I got wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you thank you again and before you leave today do you have any last words for all my back to ba back to basic listeners and viewers and how is your journey on back to basics too on top of that yeah well you know first of all let's just keep in mind that our legacy is the ultimate person that we want to become right so you know um our i've learned recently that a legacy is about living it living life and it's about learning from the past and living in the present to build for the future so you know when it comes to our legacy it doesn't mean that we have to leave money you know it's a more about our character how we want to treat people it could be things like mentoring people doing good deeds by like volunteering so it's just kind of thinking about what do we want to be remembered for and the goal isn't to live forever it's more to create something that will yeah yeah thank you thank you again and uh and how was your journey on back to basics before you leave do you know what you're an excellent interviewer this has been a great conversation and i just want to thank you for just you know having these kind of discussions with us and bringing in those professionals to help educate the community on discussions that we need to have 
yeah yeah thank you thank you again for for coming here and thank you for honestly for being a good friend of mine uh, offline and and uh, i think we have connected many many times and i'm pretty sure we're going to be talking to each other even offline much much later too so thank you again for for coming on the show and definitely my honor no worries thank you thank you so guys we spoke with our guest today and we talked about the basics of death didn't we and how to prepare for it obviously six step or memories or legacies right i mean those are the things that we talked about now there's one thing that really pinched me when she said legacy is a memory right now here's a quote of the day from back to basics and it will be kind of related to what uh, i was thinking too so thank you again uh for that uh, you know the last words that you mentioned here's a quote from back to basics the life of death is placed in the memory of the living now you want to remember the great things from the living ones or i should say death ones when they pass away the way i look at it is when my dad passed away in 2009 i didn't know what to do but the thing is that i thought to myself that this is another day to celebrate him as a third birthday or i should say a third date right so why don't you cherish that one date and remember the good things in life and that's what we're trying to do now as usual as always what do we always say at the end of the episode everything in life goes back to basics and that's what we did today guys guys take care god bless keep on commenting on all my episodes because it does make me stronger day by day week by week because back to basics does this every day and there are three things including this episode for me that is it makes it a hit which is the content the guest and definitely the host guys take care god bless and i will see you next time on back to basics god bless bye bye next week's episode on back to basics. and uh ideas from you so thank you again for all that and hopefully i, I i'm doing okay on my podcast uh, with your input so thank you again mm-hmm. for yeah you sound here. great thank you for uh for being supporting me all, all the way through so mike let me ask you this do you think mike will ever ever have a book regarding this a book mm. uh, i don't know um We'll, we'll see what happens in life. You know, I've got uh, some health issues. That's why I'm wearing the neck bracelet. I have some uh, a connective tissue disorder that affects my health and it even affects like my hands uh, and, and being able to type a lot. And so if I was to do a book, I would probably have to.